when people, it's hard for them to speak for themselves or um, to provide for themselves. Uh, and I, if I can contribute in any way, uh, I saw this as a perfect place for that. Because me being a native to uh, Phoenix and not only to Phoenix, but this country, you know, knowing English, knowing the culture, knowing my way around, knowing how to use simple appliances in a household, that is gold, that's treasure to someone who is completely foreign to America. I live, you know, at GCU for three years and I was their neighbors and, and I just felt like um, some type of responsibility um, to, to, to like show up and, and be that help. And so as I started to come here a little more, um, I started to see the reality of the need here and um, just felt like it was, it was a calling to come here. So Jesse, oh my goodness, he is a phenomenal person in general, just from his giving spirit and his openness and his willing to offer his help in any way that he can. When you start working with refugees, their whole sense of life can consume and change the way you live your life. There's a whole different type of culture when you're looking at working with refugees, and if you're not mentally prepared to adjust to that, it can seem strange to you. But the fact that he's willing to dedicate his time and is really pushing and has done a phenomenal job recruiting students from GCU in order to bring more services to help empower these young kids especially um, in terms of improving their education levels and giving them the opportunity to succeed, which is the whole reason they came to the United States. They were given this opportunity to go to school, get an education, and empower themselves. And I think it's fantastic that um, Jesse has kind of really given them that opportunity and that kind of leg up to make that all happen. Obviously my faith is a really big part of my life. Coming here was because I felt a calling to come here. So the same calling and voice that I listen to come here is the same voice I listen to on how to be available to these people of the nations. And, and that, looks, that looks different every day. It really does. Um, sometimes I don't need to, we don't need to conversate. We don't need to have dialogue, but it's just a helping hand. It's smiling, it's laughter, you know, the universal language. And through that, it's just the doors open that way, you know. And it's beautiful that we have opportunities like teaching English. It's beautiful that we have opportunities like congregating and, and getting the youth together and having playtime and gospel time. And I just see that as very important. You know, I don't want to lose sight of my my, my mission to come here. You know, I, I kind of view it as a missionary because I'm like one of the only Americans here. Okay. Obviously I have a heart for the people of the world. It would be a dream to visit all these places, visit every continent, but this is a, just a beautiful reminder that regardless where I'm at, peace, everyone needs to feel that peace. There's a lot of just division, there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of pain, uneasiness, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this, this tattoo right here reminds me to pray for those countries. I stay in Jordanian uh, three years. Uh, I don't think, uh, thinking uh, about uh, I coming here or not. But after that, all my friends, they told me why not go to see America and maybe you like it that I find a better life for you. I told him, okay, I come and I try. My country is destroyed. Yeah, it's big destroyed. It's, you see the, the people is fight between us, okay? Because you have a, a different uh, origin and uh, the people fight. I don't know why, because is, you have it one God. We were born in Bhutan. Our parents, uh, like him, uh, were born in Bhutan. So we are Bhutanese actually. So, but because of the political conflict, conflicts, so the government uh, chased us away. Uh, so, we just uh, take asylum as a refugee in Nepal. So, we stayed there in the refugee camp almost for 18 years. We have our own community. Uh, we have our relatives here near us. So, we have neighbors, we have uh, Nepali speaking yeah. people. So, they do uh, celebrate the same 
traditional culture. So it's not that much tough because we go to each other's house, we share our feelings, sorrows, we meet each other, we just talk to each other. So it's not a big deal, but yeah, uh, in fact, it's a different world here. So we need volunteers to come with an open heart and say, how can I be available? How can God use me? How can we empower uh, these kids? Because ultimately, the best way to really understand is to try, and I know that's, that's a difficult task, is to try to put yourself in their shoes, being in a country where necessarily you didn't choose, um, but you're there for whatever reason, and you have to make a living. And whether you're a child and you're going to school with a bunch of Americans who speak English, or you're an adult who you were self-efficient at one point in your home, in your country, and now you're in a completely different place and you're trying to get there. I think that for us to see that consistency of students continuing to come, it has to be first exposure to what is going on here. I feel like the more students that come and get that exposure of what we are doing, meet some of the kids, meet some of the youth, the parents, and just see this place, their hearts are gonna be stirred to wanna to continue to come. And so this is a great way, like with our tutoring and some of the other things we're doing, to really get to know someone, a, a, a child, and a relationship-based, and every week you just, want to come and see that child and check in. And, and so that'll be the key, is um, creating those relationships. What I get here is a sense of urgency. You live it, you breathe it, you see it. You know, and what I mean by that, you, know, you see the different people, you see the different cultures, you breathe it. You know, you, when just walking through here, you could just smell the different cultural foods, cooking and being here, you get to realize that this is where you live and um, it, it just gives that sense of urgency that I didn't get at GCU. But what I've learned is that my three years at GCU, I've learned what that community is and what, how that has empowered me uh, to become who I am today. And if I can take what I've learned there and somehow, somehow, even if it's a little bit, come and establish that community here, then I know what it's done for me and I want to offer that to the nations here. Um, and I know that's dreaming big, but like I said, um, I'm only a small part of already what's going on here. Um, and, you know, God has a plan here and I'm just being obedient to my part.